Hi, welcome to this second lesson of the LabVIEW Basics course. In this one, in this video, we're going to learn how to customize our virtual instruments so we can use it inside another virtual instrument. This is as a sub BI. For that, we need to customize the connectors pane and the icon of our BI. Keep watching and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So here we are with our getting started window. So what we are going to do is to create a new project. We're going to create a blank project here. Double click and we're going to have this untitled project. We're going to save it, save as, and I'm going to create a folder which is going to be lesson two. And I'm going to keep my project and project files there. So I'm going to call this lesson two. So here we have our project. And then I'm going to add a new virtual instrument. So we're, I'm not going to do anything much different at this point. But what I want to do and I want to show you is how to customize your VI so you can use as a sub VI inside another BI. So you want to reuse your functions, which is a very important part of the modularity in LabVIEW. So you need to customize your BI's connection pane and your icons. So that's what we are going to do and we're going to focus on that. So on the front panel, I'm just going to add a couple of numeric controls because I'm going to do something very simple, which is a sum of two numbers, and I'm going to add an uh, indicator. So here I'm going to have A and um, B, and I'm going to have the output C, and here I have the operation I need, which is a sum of the two numbers, and I'm going to save my BI. Just for that, I just click File, Save As, and then on Lesson 2, I'm going to save it in the same project path, but you can create a folder inside it, BIs. So then you have a more organized way to, to see your files, which I think is better, a better approach. So once you save your file, you save your BI, it's going to appear in the project tree here inside my computer, you're going to see your brand new BI, the one you just created. So how do I use this inside another BI, as a sub BI? Then I create another BI, which is the one that's going to use the zoom. And then from my project, I'm just going to drag the BI inside my new BI. So the issue three is that I cannot see any inputs or any outputs. And also, the icon doesn't indicate that you have a zone there. You, you have, mm, it's meaningless. So you can see the label here in the visible items. You can see the labels. But you usually just want something that by visual inspection, you know what it's doing. So for that, you need to edit the icon. Once you have dragged your BI inside the other BI, you can double click on it and it's going to display the front panel of this BI. Here we can see the front panel is the only thing I need. And in this top corner, I'm going to see the icon editor and the uh, connection pane. So here in the icon editor, if I do double click, then this is going to show up. I can have templates. I, you can create templates, you can add test here, and you can add a nice, uh, I don't have access here, but you can add glyphs, little icons, and you have the layers where you see your picture. I'm going to totally remove, remove this layer, and then I'm just going to create my own icon. I'm going to paint in yellow, and I'm going to add a text here that shows me what I need to know about that BI, and that's, it is a zoom. So 
So I have here and click Save. And when I see the other BI, I can see that the icon changed and now I have something more meaningful, something that tells me what this uh, sub BI is doing. But I don't have connections yet. So for that, I go to the uh, patterns here, the connector pane. And then you see when I put my mouse on top of it, the wiring tool is displayed. So I'm going to use the wiring tool and click on it and then click on the control I want to use as an input here. So this basically connects this input terminal with this control. So now the input A is going to be displayed here, right? So A is the top one connected. And then I'm going to do the same for B. And now it's going to show here A and B. And then what you should do is that from the middle to the left, these are going to be inputs. And from the middle to the right, this should be outputs. So you connect the output C in this side, and then you're going to see the output C. Um, so for now, everything is should be running perfect, but there is another option you should have. If you have an operation that it is important and requires uh, for the operator, for the programmer to connect all the inputs, then you can make a connection required. Here you can see double in right click on top of a terminal and say this connection is required. If a connection is required, you can see that it is, if it is not connected, then the BI is going to break. So you can no longer execute this BI. If I list the errors, then it's going to say the Zoom BI Zoom requires an input that is not wired. So that helps actually the programmer to know when a BI input hasn't been wired, and this can be very useful if the input should always be required. So we are going to do this for two, the two inputs because a zoom should be for two numbers, so we want this to be required. And with that, then our sub BI is ready to be used by by our main BI. So we're going to close these and save our changes. And then what I want to do, I just want to zoom to numbers, add to numbers here. A, B, and then have a third number that I'm going to subtract from C. And then the output I'm going to see it here as D. So now in the block diagram, we're going to wire A and B, which are going to be added. And then we're going to subtract from, from the result, we're going to subtract the number C and that we're going to display the result in D. So now we see the BI is no longer broken. You can execute it and you can run it. And that's because all the required inputs are wired properly. So of course we should have a more elegant wiring here, but let's not focus on that at this point. And we can make a test here, five plus five, uh, plus two, then we're going to see the result, which is eight. And with that, we should be ready to execute and use a soup BI inside another BI. Thank you very much.